Hi there. Hello. Bonjour et bienvenue. This interview was one of our most highly anticipated interviews. Roger Eber once compared you to Bill Murray, Christopher Walken, and Jack Nicholson. And today, students and teachers everywhere will discover more about you beyond the character of Dwight Schrute in The Office, for which you earned three Emmy nominations back to back. You helped create moments of delight and pure escapism as a beloved character in one of the most, one of the greatest shows of all time. And you were our top pick of all interviews for our network of teachers. You've also worked in dozens of other projects as director, author, and podcaster. And today we hope youth, hope for the future, and changing the world. We talk about thinking globally, but acting locally. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. What a delight. Fanny, what are, what are you wearing? I'm, I'm Antoine de Saint-Exupéry from Le Petit Prince because it's Literacy Day at our school. Oh, and I'm, um, I'm the cookie from If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. That's big. <laughs> uh, question one uh, is from uh, Vincent Ma Massey School in Brandon, Manitoba. You can use the chat. If you can't unmute yourself, let me know. I will unmute you. Brandon Massey School. Hi, my name is Nicole Semler. And yes, I'm from Vincent Massey School. So we kind of have a two-part question for you. And I've, I've done a little research on this. So hopefully I'm, I'm tuning into what exactly you'll be doing. Um, so if you were to put yourself back into character for just a moment, how do you think Dwight Schrute reacting to talking to thousands of kids all across the world, like how would he react to this? I've heard a little bit about the straight neck and the forward hips. Is that something you're about to do? <laughs> well, I'm not going to go into character as Dwight Schrute, but um, <laughs> I think that he would probably have... Um, a lot of really terrible advice for the young children of the world. Um, usually about, you know, the strictest obedience to parents um, and a hard work ethic, as in like getting up and chopping firewood at four in the morning, um, uh, learning to arm themselves and train in various weaponry. Um, so he's definitely not a character that you would want speaking to young global <laughs> citizens. He would give entirely the wrong uh, Im impression. You know, it's so wonderful that these are young global citizens. We're talking about kids seeing themselves as part of, um, you know, a, a, a world, you know, um, that we're homo sapiens sharing the biosphere of planet Earth. We're no longer Canadians and Americans or Californians or Manitobans or people from Calgary or people from Los Angeles. Like humanity always started in very small tribes and slowly got bigger. And now we have to let our vision be world encompassing. Absolutely. I love that. So my second part to my question would be, how do you think your character and yourself are similar? And then how would you two be different? I mean, besides the obvious thing that you just said. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think uh, Dwight and I can be pretty geeky sometimes. And, um, you know, we both like Dungeons and Dragons. We both like Lord of the Rings. Um, we both like martial arts. I used to do a lot of martial arts when I was younger. Um, awesome. So there's kind of like, I have like an inner kid Dwight Schrute. But yeah, I think that's where the resemblance ends. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was just going to show off my t-shirt really quick here. Can yeah. you see that? Oh, very nice. There's a Thank you, thing. sir. So that's fact. I'm faster than 90% of all snakes. Is that right? 80%. 80%. I got the percentage wrong. Yeah. Um, funny thing about that quote, and there's a true story. The writers, one of the writers, Jen Salata, wrote that uh, quote. She's one of our very best writers. And she hung it on the wall. And um, uh they could never find a place for it. For years, when you'd go in the writer's room of the office, there was a little note card and it said, fact, I am faster than 80% of all snakes. I love and it, it just sat on the walls for years until they finally found um, a place to use it. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. 
Thank you so much. Uh, question number two is excusing themselves. They say they'll come back uh, for question nine. I'm, I'm moving them down the list. Now we're moving to Prince Philip School in Saskatoon. Prince Philip, are you there? If you can't unmute yourself for some reason, just let me know. Mm. Prince Philip going once, Prince Philip going twice, sold to me. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you have pit bulls and you adopted butt-bellied pigs. You have a donkey named Chili Beans and a zonkey named Derek. What made you get these animals? Do you have any message about loving and caring for animals and against animal cruelty? Uh, well, that's a wonderful question. Um, yes, the, the reason we have all these animals is quite simple. My wife. She is an absolute animal lover. It's been her dream to, she rides horses. Um, she loves farms. She loves uh, working with animals. So we have pigs at our house and the donkey and the zonkey, which is part zebra, part donkey, uh, lives a couple miles away from us at where the horses are, are boarded. And um, yeah, we just love having lots of animals around. We have a big menagerie. We have rescued pit bulls. Say it's really important if you get a dog that you get a rescue because there's so many homeless dogs on the street um, and not to buy a dog from a, a breeder or a puppy mill. And um, yeah, I think that, I think the important thing for me is that I think children should learn to really love and care for animals because it's way easier to love and care for an animal than it is for another human being. So it's a good training ground um, to love and care and have empathy for animals because essentially humans are basically animals. So uh, it can increase our empathy and compassion and our care for our fellow human beings. Um, if there's a really poor country and there's a, and everyone is starving to death there, like how would we feel if we knew it was a, a country just filled with kittens and puppies and they were all starving to death? Like the world would band together and go drop food and make sure they're okay and pet those puppies and pet those kittens. But this happens all the time with human beings and we ignore it. So we have to expand our view uh, around compassion. What a wonderful answer. Thank you so much. The next question is Nicole uh, Lumsden, I believe, in Manitoba. Hi, my name is Noah and I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Okay. Here's my question. Yeah. Mr. Wilson, we also conduct a spiritual series of interviews where we explore world religions. Would you be willing to come back one of these days to share in depth about the Baha'i faith? Without getting into the details, could you share some very basic beliefs and how your faith helps you? Uh, certainly, yes. I'd love to come back and speak about the Baha'i faith. Um, so... Uh, that's wonderful that you include religions in this conversation about being a global citizen because uh, spiritual beliefs and uh, spiritual groups um, uh, is an important part of uh, creating bonds of unity around the globe. And that's what the Baha'i Faith is all about. So Baha'i Faith believes that there's only one God and this God has sent divine teachers down through various periods in time. Um, bringing God's message to humanity, um, which is uh, the, uh, uh, you know, and these are some of these spiritual teachers you've heard of, like the Buddha, like Jesus, like Muhammad, like other prophets, like Abraham and Moses and um, Krishna. And so the Baha'is are really believers in all the world's religions. And we have a plan to attempt to try and build um, love, peace, and unity throughout the world. That's it. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. Robert Adams, and it's Cynthia, it's your turn. 
Perfect, my turn. <laughs> Bonjour, hello. My name is Cynthia Texera, and I'm a French immersion teacher at Robert Adams Middle School in Holliston, Massachusetts. We're just outside Boston. Um, I would like to ask um, my question on behalf of my French immersion students, premièrement en français and then in English. Pouvez-vous nous parler un peu de la Fondation Mona et le travail qui est fait dans cette fondation? Could you tell us a little bit more about the Mona Foundation and the work that they do? Certainly. Yes. So the Mona Foundation is um, a nonprofit charity that I'm on the board of and I've been working with for a very long time, at least 12 years. And what they do, they have a beautiful uh, philosophy, which is that they raise money in the United States and Canada and some other places in the world, and they look for schools that are have been built on the grassroots that are already working in other areas of the world but just need additional funding and then they help those schools grow uh over a, like a five or a ten year plan so this is not because too many charities in the western world kind of like have a western philosophy about how education should work and then go in to another uh place another location and kind of tell people how they should do things and you know build something that costs way too much money but it's much more cost effective to find um successful grassroots oriented community oriented schools in the developing world and to give them the support that they need great merci beaucoup merci. appreciate your time de nada Love it, multilingual. Let's do every language we can. Uh, I call Alvin Buckwood in Saskatoon. Good morning, Rain. Can you hear us okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hi, my name is Kara Kalanak. I'm the grade 7 8 uh, teacher at Ecole Alvin Buckwood School, um, and we have a French immersion class here. Um, I have a student with a, kind of a three part question for you, so I will pass you to Ellen. Could you tell us some of your work for Haiti and your love for Haiti? Certainly. Um, uh, wonderful. Can you guys see me okay? Um, uh, so m maybe you want to spotlight my video, Monsieur. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So... Speaking of the Mona Foundation, uh, we took a trip down to Haiti right before the earthquake. And um, can you can you hear me okay? I see people. Yeah, okay. you're doing great. Okay. Don't worry. I just see some people frozen, so I was getting concerned. Um, and yeah. we traveled around Haiti. This is about 12 years ago. Really fell in love with the country, the beautiful culture. The music, the food, the people, the vibrancy, the humor. Obviously, it's a very, very poor place. And um, and then the earthquake happened. And this was in 2010. So you probably were all very small. But it was one of the most tragic events in human history. Um, in the matter of minutes, two or 300,000 people died. Um, and in one of the poorest countries of the world. And... It was, it was just awful, and my wife and I had just been there, and we knew we needed to do something. So we came back, and we did a, um, a workshop on the arts, and, we, um, uh, and it was very successful. We worked with girls, adolescent girls, doing the arts, and out of that, we launched eventually Lide Haiti, which is an arts and literacy-based educational initiative for adolescent girls um, in Haiti. And right now we work with about 800 girls in about 10 locations. We give scholarships, we do tutorials, and uh, we have a computer lab and offer many other services, uh, a food program as well, and, uh, and health care uh, to these girls. So uh, I really love the country of Haiti and the people of Haiti. And um, we're proud to be employing um, dozens and dozens of Haitians uh, in this work who basically run this organization. Do you speak some, do you speak some French and Creole as a result of your work there? 
Uh, oui. Uh, but of course, I, what I do, I speak uh, English with a Montreal accent. <laughs> Bravo. <that> Russian? <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. In public schools online learning center. Uh, you co-wrote the New York Times bestseller, Soul Pancake, Chew on Life's Big Questions, and a humorous memoir about your personal life, career, and faith called The Bassoon King. Can you tell us a bit about these books? Also, do you play the bassoon? Can you tell kids about that instrument? Do you have a word of advice for kids who may want to pick up an instrument? <laughs> um, yes. So uh, I've... I co-wrote a book called Soul Pancake, and I wrote another book called The Bassoon King, um, a memoir, a, a humorous memoir of my life. And um, uh, I'm working now on a third book. Uh, this is a book about how spirituality contains the tools to change the world. And uh, very excited about that one. I'm just getting going. And... Uh, Uh, so I have a lot of interests other than acting. And yes, when I was in junior high school, I used to play the bassoon. And as a matter of fact, I have one right here. It's a beautiful instrument. Oh, nice. Yes. Well, they're a long expensive. instrument. They're expensive. <laughs> they are expensive. <laughs> yep. They are expensive. Um, But uh, I love the bassoon. I still play now and again. And I think that music is such an important part of being a human being and expressing oneself and making music, listening to music, playing music, sharing music, playing together. And I think in terms of, and they've done studies in developing the brain, um, music uh, has a great um, ability to kind of heal the brain, heal trauma and... Um, It's an important part of education, and I highly recommend it uh, to everyone uh, watching. Amazing. We love it. Thank you. Um, this one, the next two questions, I will play videos, and I, I just learned how to make, hopefully you'll be able to hear, because I learned something today. That should work. Give me one. We're, we're good to go. Let's go. My name is Sarah Fasika, and I am a year seven student at Manirewa Intermediate in Manirewa, New Zealand. Mr. Wilson, the entire existence of our young global citizen move movement is due to how deeply concerned we are about the state of the planet. Is this something that also concerns you? Were you able to hear, Rain? Yes, I was. That was a wonderful question. Thank you, New Zealand. And um, I love the choice of the television show running in the background. That was beautiful. Nice touch. Um, I think that, uh, the number one concern, well, yeah, I'll say the number one concern on all young students' minds should be climate change and learning about climate, um, learning the science of climate change, um, and what exactly, um, leads to climate change. It's something I'm very involved with. I'm on the board of a nonprofit called Uh, Arctic Base Camp, which is a um, climate change um, uh, organization uh, with, that gets information out about what's happening in the Arctic right now, because the Arctic is really ground zero for, for climate change. So um, super important that young people educate themselves and activate themselves around climate change and the environment. And this can happen in a number of different ways. It can happen from you know, um, you know, trash cleanup and recycling. It can happen to, you know, with just a deeper love and appreciation of nature and especially really learning about what exactly leads to climate change. Because there's some surprising things like, did you know that one of the easiest way you, you can reduce climate change is to stop eating beef? Uh, beef and cattle production is one of the number, is one of the top five, sources of um, climate change uh, issues. It's very wasteful and produces a great deal of, of methane and cuts down a lot of forests. And, you know, so it's important to learn about these things and then to make the changes and convince your parents 
to make the changes and your communities and your schools to make the changes uh, and become young activists on behalf of planet Earth. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Manu Rewa School. And uh, there's a school that was uh, scheduled for question number two, San Francis Cree Bilingual School. You're ready to proceed, so go ahead. Oh. There we go. Hi, my name is Caitlin Lauren. I'm a teacher here at St. Francis Cree Bilingual School. I have a student here um, wanting to ask a question, so I'm going to hand it off to them. Um, and yeah, so there we go. Um, Tom say Ms. Seagats and Cameron. Um, hello, Mr. Wilson. My name is Cameron from St. Francis Cree Bilingual School. Our question to you is, what do you think makes Dwight Schrute so lovable in an unexpected way, uh, very member memorable and so timeless? <laughs> um, well, that's a wonderful uh, question. And, uh, you know, I I'm not sure because he's kind of a jerk. And he's kind of full of himself. And, but I think that in acting, it's really important to play a specific character. You can never really put your finger on what exactly Dwight is. Like, is he a nerd? Is he a bully? Is he um, a loser? Is he, you know, an alpha male? Like, it's, it's hard. He has a lot of different aspects to his character. It's a very rich and detailed character, the way the writers wrote Dwight. So I think the more specifically you play a character um, with the more details, um, then that makes the character all the more memorable. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Sorry. I... Yeah. How do you say How do you say thank you in in Cree? Uh, hi hi. Hi hi. Okay. Thank you. That was amazing. Uh, thank you so much. And right now is a question from uh, Morocco. So uh, they will also, they will speak Arabic, French, and English. They're learning English through these interviews. And it's just amazing. Hi, So the kids are saying, we're publishing a book. We're raise, raising money for indigenous communities without access to clean water. We have artists who have already agreed to make a contribution. And we would like to ask you if you would write a haiku about the planet. Um, uh, wonderful. You can see me. Everyone can see me okay? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'll write a haiku about the planet. Um, what is it? Three, five, three. How does it work? You five, chose? seven. I think yeah. it's five, seven, five, seven. Am I right? So we'll figure it out and we'll communicate yeah. with your agent. And we would love to have your haiku and our, and our book. Wonderful. Coast to Coast, how children came together during a pandemic to save the planet. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. I think we have a bonus real quick with two minutes left. Oh, no, we have a, a special guest in the kindergarten class, uh, Stephanie. Hello again, Mr. Wilson. Um, I have a student of mine here that would love to ask you a question. And I'm going to turn it over to Lisa. <laughs> Well, Mr. Wilson, my name is Luca and I'm in kindergarten. 
My question is, what would you put in a time capsule to be opened by the next generation? <laughs> what a great question, Luca. Like 30 years. 30, 30 years. years. 30 years from now. Um, well, I'd have to put an office DVD set. I don't know if they'd, and then I'd have to put a DVD player because I don't know if they'd have DVD players 30 years from now, right? Um, what else? Um, there's this other character that I'm playing in a new pod, comedy podcast called Terry Carnation, and he has a beautiful crystal necklace. Maybe I'd put that in. Um, maybe like a sandwich, like a turkey sandwich in case someone was hungry. Um, It'll become old by that time and run. Well, you never know. I don't know. It maybe some, if someone's hungry expire. enough, you never know. You know? No, it might expire. It Maybe would. so. Maybe so. I would put that piece of artwork behind your head, Luca. Um, the map world green. I'd put that in there as well. Um, uh, yeah, and maybe even a, a tape recording of, of this discussion. And also, I'm the only student in the class. You've got to look over there. What? There is over there. He came the only student for you this morning. <laughs> yeah, show him the whole class. He wants to see the class is empty and he's okay. so it's so brave. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just you, Luca. Your lucky day. <laughs> there he is. Get, let's get someone get Luca his own TV show, by the way. Let's get let's get this going. Get this kid on the air. Amazing for him. Okay. Uh, I think we had uh, Okay, Luca, Luca. That's it. That was that was it for you. That was amazing. Um, I I have a question. And they're asking. They said they they watched your show. They watched The Office, and it's, it helped them during the pandemic, like for their mental health. That's what kept them going during the pandemic. Do you have a final message for young people everywhere? Let's just say that final message. Well, I think that what. Uh, the young people are doing here and the organizers of this event are doing is just wonderful. And this is what we need. We need more international cooperation, communication, um, uh, collaboration, and working together to make the world a better place. We need to be building bridges, not walls. And, uh, and there's so much, um, difficulty and injustice in the world, but everyone can make a difference. And you have to believe that, that every single one of you, you might feel very small, oh, I'm just a, you know, an elementary student in uh, Manitoba, but you can learn a lot looking at the example of Greta Thunberg, you know, who um, just started protesting in front of the Swedish parliament every Friday uh, about the Swedish uh, laws around climate change and she started a global movement of young people and especially young women and girls that are taking leadership roles. And so find a cause that's near and dear to your heart and work at it. And you really can make a difference. Bethany, do you have a conclusion for us? Thank you. I do. Um, Mr. Wilson, you were incredibly gracious in accepting this interview. You've been a tremendous model of positivity uh, and great values, and we thank you for everything you are and how full of surprises you are. You agreeing to give children this opportunity to grow in their communication, confidence, and thinking skills has made and will make a huge difference for them, truly. We have many upcoming interviews, actually, and we would love to invite you to return as a host to future interviews. And uh, we have a special request that you would help us approach maybe some individuals you've worked with before. And we think you would do so amazing at introducing them for us. And we hope that you can accept this honorary title we confer upon you of a young global citizen. So thank you. Yay. I think that the, the word that resonates the most with me is young. <laughs> it's the first time I've been called young in a very, very long time. So I, I humbly accept being a young global citizen. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Merci. We'll send a little present your way by, by an indi indigenous artist. And now everyone, if you can unmute yourselves, try to unmute, there you go. 
and say goodbye. Merci. Bye. 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 Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.